Hi everybody, I'm Craig. I'm standing here in front of my 2023 TLRV uh, FLEV uh, 14. It is a solar unit that is made, I think, for boondocking and things along those lines. Uh, we got it because we were pretty tired of camping out in the open desert at Burning Man and we wanted something that was a little bit more self-contained and that we could tow behind a RAV4 tow vehicle. So let me take a quick walk around. A uh, little bit of disclaimer as we walk around the unit. I am not an expert in solar. I'm not an expert in electricity. I'm not an expert in anything RV or camping. So all sorts of disclaimers there. Anything that I tell you about is kind of do at your own risk. Um, there's some things that you might see that are a little bit different from my unit based on ones you might get from the factory because I've made some upgrades over time. But I'm gonna walk you through those. And what we're gonna do today is talk about how to turn on the unit, the difference between the 12 volt items, the difference between the 120 volt items and what those are, how the solar charges the battery, how you can charge the battery from shore power, and some of the things that I'd recommend changing or doing once you first get your FLEV. Let's take a look inside. Now, as I mentioned, there are some things that are gonna be a little bit different in my Rove from yours, but I'm gonna go right to talking about 12 volt items and how we can turn those on. Then we'll talk about how to turn on 120 20 volt items. First thing you might notice is this little red key. When this little red key is out, that disconnects the circuit for 12 volt items. I'm gonna turn this on by inserting the key and rotating it. And now I'm gonna walk you through what the 12 volt items are in the camper. So the first is right here. This is the water pump. I have this in the off position because I don't have any fresh water in my tank right now. But if I were to flip this switch, the water pump would turn on. We have our lights, those are 12 volt items. I replaced our lights with a softer white version that could be dimmable, so mine might look a little bit different from yours. Another 12 volt item is our stereo. Other 12 volt items would be the things like the fan in the ceiling, as well as the fan in the bathroom. We also upgraded our toilet to an Ogo compostable toilet, and there's a tiny little fan that runs in that, as well as the agitator. The next thing that runs on our 12 volt is our refrigerator. You'll notice that we don't have the fireplace anymore that a lot of FLEVs have. We removed that so that we could get a lot more storage. The problem that we had with the fireplace is that it only had the ability to turn on or off. There wasn't the ability to set a specific temperature. So we just got a little portable ceramic heater. All right, so let's take a look at some of our battery controls, which is also where we're gonna find our inverter to turn on our 120 volt electricity. I'm gonna come back to explaining what all of these things are in a moment, but we have at least 99% battery, so we can go ahead and turn our inverter on. The inverter is what converts the 12 volt from the battery into 120 volt electricity. So to turn it on, we just press this little button here and you're gonna hear a really long, loud beep that's gonna come from the inverter, which is below the bed. After the beep, you'll notice this little green light is flickering on and off. We can show the 12 volt items being turned on as there's a little light now next to this GFCI outlet. This is just an electrical outlet next to the bed. Also, if we go up to our air conditioning unit, if we hit power, it's gonna come right on. And so now we have our 12 volt items on because the red switch is on, as well as our 120 volt items because the inverter charger is turned on. And if we go back to our battery monitor, we can see that we're pulling about 600 watts of electricity from the battery right now. The other 120 volt item in the camper is the induction cooktop. All of the power outlets, of which there's one here, there's another one in the back here, there's the one from the heater that we unplugged, which is down under here, there's one for our water heater, which is also 120 volts. And we have a 120 volt outlet on the outside, as well as one little secret one that I'll show you in a little bit as we get a little bit further into this video. The next thing that I wanna show you is what the breakers are and where the breakers and the fuses are for both the 120 volt and the 12 volt items. So back here, next to where this little red switch is, is our fuse box for all of our 12 volt items. So you can see that there's a bunch of fuses on the left. Those are the fuses that come stock with the camper. You'll see that there's an extra fuse in there because that's a fuse I tapped into for the fan that works with the Ogo toilet. Next to the fuse box is our Intellitronics smart circuit breaker system. If we pop that open, these are all of the circuit breakers for all of the 120 volt items that are in the camper. 
All right, so now let's talk about what some of these items are next to the battery and for the battery management and electrical management system in the camper. So at the top is the Intellitronics Smart Breaker System. You can see that it says Max Amps 25, enter to change. We always want this to be no more than 25 because 25 amps times 120 volts is 3000 watts and 3000 watts is what our inverter charger is rated for for its maximum output. If you wanted to change that number, however, you could press the enter button and you'll see that I can hit one of these buttons below to change our max amps to 50, 30, and 25. We're gonna leave it at 25 amps. We can hit these little up and down arrow buttons to scroll through some of the different settings within the Intellitronic system. So I'm gonna take you through what I believe those are right now. So we can see that we're using 6.8 amps and that's mostly from the air conditioner being turned on right now. We can see right here the circuit that the air conditioner is on is at 6.8 amps. We can see that the air conditioner is pulling about 748 watts. We can also see this circuit priority. We can determine which circuit we want the camper to prioritize to give electricity to should it ever go beyond the 3000 watt limit. What that would mean is that let's say that we're using the induction cooktop, the air conditioner, and somebody has like a hair dryer plugged in. What the camper would do is start to turn items off based on the priority until we fall below that 3000 watt limit, the 25 amp limit, and then it would slowly bring items back on in the priority order that we had set. That's a feature and a functionality that we don't use a whole lot, but it's there if you need it. As we keep scrolling through, again, you could set some custom max amps. We could hit enter to show the watts history. We could set an on delay timer. We haven't really used that function much in our camper. And going back, we can see then the max amps that our system is set to. Let's go back to the wattage that we're using right now because I want to show you our battery monitor. We're using around 759 watts from our air conditioner. You'll notice, however, the battery monitor says 632 watts. Well, let's talk about that. The first thing is we have a 400 amp hour battery in the FLEV. Right now, my battery has about 389 amp hours remaining. So it's at 98% capacity. And so what that tells us is that in about eight hours at this current load, we would run out of battery power. So we could sit in here with the air conditioner running for about eight hours. But you'll notice that this 639 watts, which is how much the battery is being drawn down by right now, is quite a bit lower than what our air conditioner is using. The reason why there's a difference is a combination of both the solar electricity coming from the sun right now, as well as the amount of electricity that the inverter charger uses just running on its own. So let's turn off the air conditioner and see what happens. All right, so we've turned off our air conditioner and we can see that our intelligent management system says zero watts across the board because nothing else is plugged in. We can see that our battery is being charged at about 248 watts right now. And so in order for the battery to get to 400 amp hours, which would be full, would take about 34 minutes if the sun were to stay right where it is right now. So the reason why we're at 248 watts is it's a relatively sunny day here in Minnesota. You'll notice that this number will probably change a little bit throughout the video as it's a partly cloudy day overall. The inverter is still turned on, even though we aren't pulling any watts because nothing else is plugged in or turned on, the inverter itself uses a little bit of electricity. So let's go ahead and turn the inverter off. And we do that by just clicking the button in. We can hear it click underneath the bed and this little green light stopped blinking. You'll notice that our watts just jumped up and that's the difference between what the inverter was using at idle and how much electricity is being generated by our solar right now. On the roof of the FLEV are 400 watts of solar panels. And so pulling in about 285 watts of electricity from that is pretty good because they're not tilted directly towards the sun. So again, right now we're pulling in about 285 watts and that's charging up our battery. Now I'm gonna show you some things that I've discovered in the FLEV that might be useful to you. So first, let's unplug or disconnect the 12 volt power to our devices in the camper. So by pulling out this switch, what that means is that anything that's connected to these fuses in this fuse box here isn't going to work. So we can prove that by looking up and clicking on and off the light, and you can see nothing happens. The stereo is turned off. And one thing that's kind of interesting is that this intelligent 
management system for the 120 volt system actually is powered by the 12 volt system itself. So we can turn on the inverter right now and you'll hear it beep. And even though nothing from the 12 volt system is connected or powered, so, so none of our lights are going to turn on. So now, even though none of our 12 volt systems are going to work, our 120 volt systems will work. And we can show that by turning on the air conditioner. So what I believe that means is that the intelligent circuit breaker down here just becomes a regular circuit breaker whenever the 12 volt disconnect is pulled out. All right, so now let's talk about some of the ways that the battery can be charged. So the first is just good old fashioned sunlight. Right now you can see it's kind of a partly cloudy day and the solar panels are just charging up the battery just fine. But we can also plug shore power in as well if we want to use that to charge the battery. There's also a separate solar blanket that comes with the entire camper setup and I'll show you how to plug that in as well. All right, so I've come back to the inverter charger and I'm gonna turn that off before we move forward. And over here, we have our 12 volt disconnect disconnected. So in theory, the only things that should be connected right now is the solar panels to the battery itself. And that's why we're charging. But let's say that it was kind of a cloudy day and we wanted to plug in some shore power in order to charge up our battery. Let me walk you through how we can do that. So on the outside of the camper, on the side opposite of the door, there's a little latch that we can open up right here and that opens up where we can plug in some shore power. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in our extension cord. Then I'm just going to secure it tightly. All right. Now let's go plug this in on the other end. All right. So just to show you basically how this would work, we're going to plug this in here. All right. Now that we've got shore power plugged in, let's come back and take a look at things. Now you'll notice nothing has changed. And the reason why nothing has changed is because shore power is going into the inverter before it goes on to anything else and the inverter is turned off right now, so nothing's gonna happen. This isn't going to add to our wattage that we're bringing into our battery. It doesn't power anything on in our camper right now, so you can see there's no lights on in the GFCI outlet. And you can also see that we can't turn the lights on or off. So just plugging in the shore power doesn't do enough. So if we want electricity, even if our battery was almost completely discharged and we're plugged into shore power, we still have to turn on the inverter charger. And let's see what happens if we do that. Now you may have noticed we heard a little bit of a different sound. There was a double beep, but then the inverter charger came on. And now you can see that we're charging at a much higher rate than if it was just the sunlight alone. So now the battery has jumped up to about 780 watts of charge, even though it's a sunny day. The reason why it hasn't gone any further than that is because I've set some settings on the inverter that limits how much electricity it will use to charge the battery so that I don't blow any circuits inside my house. I'll go over those settings in a little bit. But now we can go back, we could turn the air conditioning on, and we can see that it works just fine. And if we go back and take a look at our battery settings, we can see that we're still charging at 787 watts. So what must be happening with our total electrical draw right now? Let's take a look by plugging in our 12 volt connector so that we can see what's going on with our smart circuit breaker. Now that the 12 volt electricity is connected, we're gonna go back to our battery monitor situation our Teletronics now is displaying information. So let's start scrolling through to see what's going on. So we can see we're using seven amps. We're using 770 watts. That's what's being used. So 770 watts is what's being used by the air conditioner. We know that a moment ago, we were charging at about 300 watts. So there's about 480 watts that's going into our battery from a charge. So 780 plus about 480. So when we add all of that up together, we know that we're using about 1100 watts of electricity and a standard home electric outlet at 15 amps and 120 volts is 1800 watts. So we're well under the breaker load of the house right now. One thing to be cautious though of is if I were to go ahead and turn on our induction cooktop, that can run at well over one kilowatt. If I were to add a kilowatt of draw, it would likely flip a breaker inside of our house. So next I'm gonna show you something else that I discovered that I'd recommend most of you change in your FLEV. And that has to do with a secondary charger that's not on the FLEV instruction manual that they give you. All right, so what you're looking at here is a WFCO converter. What this does is it converts AC power, 120 volt electricity, into DC power to charge a battery. Typically this would be used in an RV to keep the 12 volt battery charged up on shore power. 
because shore power would run through the regular 120 volt circuit into this converter and from this converter into the battery. But as we've seen, the 120 volt circuit in the FLEV is completely behind the inverter charger that the FLEV comes shipped with. So when this little unit is plugged in, it's drawing electricity from the inverter charger and then effectively trying to charge the battery from itself. This little device can be found behind this cabinet here. And so when we open this cabinet, your FLEV is probably going to have a panel right here with a couple of screws in it. And what you can't see, because we have a whole bunch of stuff in here, is that there's an electrical outlet on the floor in this cabinet, and that is where that little converter is plugged into. And what we noticed is anytime we turned our inverter on, when this was plugged in, our inverter would use an extra 400 watts of power. So when our inverter was idling, it would show 400 watts on the battery monitor, even though we weren't using 400 watts of power. And it wasn't until we found and disconnected this little converter that our inverter charger appears to be working normally now. We believe that this was effectively trying to use the battery to charge itself. And that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. The only thing that we could determine is that this probably comes standard in, an, in a regular FL floor model. They probably built most of the trailer around the FL floor plan, which included this little converter, and then they probably made all of the upgrades to the solar equipment for the FLEV and never uninstalled this converter. So there's a really quick way that you can disconnect this converter without entirely removing it. And the way we do that is we go back to our little circuit breaker here. We're gonna open this panel and you'll see that one of these switches is marked CON. And I believe that that means converter because when this switch is in the down position, that converter wasn't being used anymore. So the fastest way you can check to see if that converter is plugged in would be to turn on your inverter and see how much power it's drawing at idle and then flipping this switch that says CON. If everything else in your trailer works just fine, like your air conditioner and your stove top, but you're noticing that you're using overall less electricity, then odds are you have that converter installed. I keep this switch turned on because we've already removed the converter, and that means I have an extra 120 volt outlet in that cabinet in case I want to use it. Now one quick thing that I wanted to show was when the inverter is turned off, even though we have shore power plugged in right now, if we go up and try to turn on the air conditioner, nothing's going to happen. The only way that the air conditioner is going to turn on is if we turn the inverter on, even when the shore power is plugged in. There comes on the inverter. Now if we go back over to the air conditioner and we turn it on, it turns right on. We're going to unplug the shore power next and talk about how to plug in the solar blanket that comes as an added item in the FLEV. But before we do that, one of the things that I like to do is to make sure that our inverter is turned off anytime I'm not using the camper. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the inverter now. Here's a couple of solar panel mounts that I got that are made out of aluminum, so they're super lightweight. I plasti dipped the corners because they're relatively sharp, but they're really easy to set up and put the panel on top of so I can angle it towards the sun. I'm going to set that up now. So here's the solar blanket. I'm about to roll it out and plug it in, but before I do that I wanted to show you something. Look at how short the solar panel extension cord is. This needs to plug into the side of our camper, and I'll show you that in a moment. But having a cable that's this short really limits our options for where we can place our solar blanket. So I picked up a couple of solar panel extension cables. These really help me when it comes to the placement of the solar panel itself. I'm going to show you what that looks like now. Alright, so here we are near the front of the camper, and this is where we can plug in the secondary solar connect. If we want a little bit of extra electricity, let's say that we're out and using the air conditioning the whole time and we want to do a lot of cooking. So the first thing is there's these little rubber end caps that we just pull right off. And we don't want to lose those because we want those to be on any time that we're driving anywhere. The next thing we're going to do is plug in each of the solar cables. So we just take our end and plug it in until it snaps. And we take our other end and we plug it in until it snaps as well. And now it's just as simple as plugging these in to the other end of the solar blanket. I'm going to do that now and then I'll show you what it looks like when we're done. All right, so now we have our solar power cables plugged in and they're running a nice long way out to our solar blanket. It's pretty easy to just slide in each one of those solar panel fans. And what's really handy is on top of the solar blanket, it has these little pieces of rope that just tie around the bolts on each one of the solar panel stands. 
Here's what it looks like underneath, and it would be pretty easy just to hammer in a few tent stakes to keep the solar panel mount from flying away. All right, as you just saw, the sun just came back out after being behind the clouds. So let's take a look inside the camper and see how we're doing for solar panel generation. And as we can see, we're up around 500 watts of electricity that we're bringing in from the, both the solar panels on top of the camper as well as the solar panels outside. The solar panels on top of the camper are rated at about 400 watts and that solar blanket is rated at 300 watts. So getting at about 500 watts total on a not perfectly sunny day and when the solar panels on the roof of the camper aren't tilted towards the sun themselves, I think that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with getting about 500 watts of power coming into the battery. When we're going on just a single day trip, we don't even bring the solar blanket with us. We find that the solar panels on the roof do a pretty good job of keeping the battery topped up. But if we were going to be away from home for more than just a couple of days, I'd probably bring the solar blanket along. Next, we're going to talk about how everything is connected. And to do that, I need to get under the bed. So I'm going to take the bed apart now, and I'll see you in just a minute. All right, now let's take a look at how everything is wired up underneath the bed. First off, I just keep a couple of these little one by twos that are maybe eh, three feet long in length. They're super lightweight. I just keep them folded down right inside here so that I can use them to prop up the bed whenever I'm working on the battery. So on the far right hand side, you'll see the battery. As I mentioned earlier, there's a few things that I've done to customize my FLEV. So first I'm gonna talk about things that are pretty common between our FLEVs, and then I'll talk about what things I've customized. So first, you'll notice over here is the battery. That's the big 5,000 watt battery that has 400 amp hours. Over here, this is the inverter charger. Again, it puts out up to 3,000 watts of power when it's pulling either off the battery or from shore power. Down here, underneath all of this cabling, you'll see two bus bars. There's a bus bar here and a bus bar there. The one with the red top and the red, air, the red wires going in and out of it, that's the positive terminal. And all of the things that are plugged into the battery go through that one bus bar. All of the things that are plugged into the negative or the ground go through this bus bar, the one with the little yellow dial on the top. On the other side are the two solar controllers. The one on the right is the one that's connected to the rooftop, and the one on the left is what's connected to the solar blanket if I plug that in. Behind the inverter charger is the battery disconnect cable. And you'll notice that I've added a couple of handles onto mine. And the reason I did that is this is what you want to pull apart if you ever want to disconnect your battery. Any time that you're getting any charge coming into the solar controllers, you can't turn the battery off. If you live in a place like Minnesota where it gets really, really cold, you definitely want to turn off your battery over the winter time. And so even if I were to hold down that silver button to turn the battery off, it will not turn off and it will just keep flashing unless the solar controllers are not connected to the battery. And the reason for that is anytime the battery detects that it's either getting a charge or giving a charge, it won't turn itself off. You'll also notice right now that the inverter charger is turned off. And there's a few settings in the inverter charger that I want to show you. So here we go, turning on the inverter. And listening to the very loud beep that it makes. Now that is actually just a remote switch for the inverter charger. The wire for that runs down through this little channel over here, and then on the very front of the inverter charger, there's an actual physical switch. That's the actual on-off switch for your inverter charger. So if your inverter charger is ever not working or not responding to the, the button being pushed on or off, that's the remote, then try this little rocker switch down here to make sure that that's in the on position. So now, onto the inverter charger itself. First thing that we can see is that it's outputting 119 volts. And we can see that there's a tiny little arrow going from the full battery up and over to this light bulb, and the light bulb indicates the load. You'll see that there's nothing in this little funnel next to the light bulb because I don't have anything on right now. If I had the air conditioner running or the stovetop running, that would be pulling some load from the inverter charger, and you would see this little gauge start to fill up. Also, if our battery was depleted, you would see that gauge start to come down a little bit. And that reminds me, I want to show you what the battery monitor is connected to. So over here, next to the bus bar, you'll see this big, huge connector. And there's a tiny little cable that's kind of tough to see. You'll see if we can get in there. There's this tiny little cable right about here. And that's what's connected to the battery charge monitor. And so that is what's determining how much power our battery has. 
but that's not the only way to see how much charge our battery has. We can also look at right at the top of the inverter charger when the inverter charger is on. So remember earlier when we plugged into shore power, we both are charging the battery at the same time that we're powering all of the 120 volt items in the camper. Well, let's say we want to bring down the charge that goes into the battery so we don't accidentally trip a breaker in our house if we're just using our household electrical power. So the way that we do that is we hold this little down and left arrow button and that gets us into the settings. Then we can use this up arrow to go all the way over to setting 11 and this is the number of amps that we're charging the battery at. Now remember it's a 12 volt battery officially and so a 35 amp charge into a 12 volt battery is just 35 times 12 which is 420 watts. So what that means is if I have 1800 watts total for my household electricity, again, watts is just amps times volts, and household electricity, AC power, is 120 volts, it's at 15 amps, which is 1800 watts. So I have 1800 watts to play with. By setting this at 35 amps, I'm pulling 420 watts into the battery, and that leaves me with about 1380 watts for the rest of the camper. And so that gives a little bit of headroom for the inverter charger itself, which we know takes about, you know, 40 watts at idle. And if we're running the air conditioner, that can use as much as six to 800 watts. So we should have plenty of headroom by bringing this down to 35 amps. So from the factory, this is set to 75 amp charging rate, which again, 75 times 12 volts is about 900 watts. So if we leave this alone at 75 amps and we plug it into shore power at our house, then already we're using 900 watts to charge the battery with, and that leaves very little to use for our air conditioner or any other device. And remember earlier when we talked about that converter charger, which that doesn't show up on any of the manuals for this unit, that can add up to an extra 450 watts. Well, already we're using about 1300 to 1400 watts just to power the battery when we're plugged into shore power and the inverter is turned on if we leave all the defaults alone and if we don't take out that converter. By taking out the converter and changing our amps to 35 amps, that gives us way more electrical headroom when we're using our household shore power to power our camper. So now let's talk about how to turn the battery off if we're not gonna be using it for a little while. If I'm not gonna be using the battery within the next week, I like to turn it off, especially if it's already charged at 100%. I don't want the solar controllers and the solar panels to keep trying to top up the battery when it's already full. But again, remember, if I just press that silver button on top of the battery, it's not going to turn off if it's already detecting a charge from the solar controllers. So, by default, I would have to just disconnect the Anderson connector, but that's kind of hard to get to. You have to tug really hard on those cables to get them to disconnect, and they're really wedged in there deeply. So I'm gonna show you what I did instead, but to give you a clue, we can follow an eight gauge wire from the solar connectors all the way down past the battery and over by the storage door. And so let's go outside and I'll show you what I've done. All right, so here's the little door to the compartment underneath the bed. And you can see right away that I've installed a two gang box with two solar disconnect switches. And I've marked them 300 watts for the solar blanket and 400 watts for the rooftop solar on top of the camper. As I mentioned earlier, I'm not a solar power expert and I'm not an electrician. So I don't know if this is the right way to do things, but this is what my research led me to believe was the right way to hook in a disconnect so that I could turn on and off the battery based on how the FLEV is set up. Coming into the top of the box are eight gauge wires that come from the solar controllers and coming out the bottom of the box are eight gauge wires that go back to the bus bars. And so now whenever I wanna disconnect the battery, I just turn both of these switches off and then on, I can reach through on top without having to take the lid off of the bed and I can push the silver button on top of the battery and then I can look up at the bottom of the bed and I can see the reflection of the light on the battery. It spends about a minute flashing blue and then it turns off completely. I found that that works pretty well for me rather than having to take the entire bed apart and pulling apart those cables to disconnect and then turn off the battery. So one thing that's worth noting on this inverter charger as well is how it works. So the two orange cables that come in, one of those that's coming in on the right of it is the shore power, and going out of it is what goes to all the 120 volt items on the camper. The big red and black wires that go into the inverter, 
That's what comes into the inverter to turn into 3000 watts of power. But remember, it's an inverter charger. So that also is what supplies power back to the battery when the inverter is in charge mode. And the inverter itself is relatively smart. So it determines when it should be charging versus when it should be inverting. And there's not a whole lot of control that you have over that, except for what you see in the manual. You can certainly tweak some of the settings, but I'll leave it up to you to read the manual and figure out what settings you want to change. All right, so that about does it. But before I leave you, I want to show you what I like to do when I know I'm not going to be using the camper for even more than just a day. The first is to make sure that the inverter is turned off. By just looking at these two little lights here, I can tell the inverter is off. Plus, this little button is kind of in the out position. But when I look at this Intellitronics monitor, I can tell that the 12 volt switch is still connected. So let's go and disconnect that real quick. So again, here's the 12 volt disconnect. Now remember, 12 volt disconnect can sound a little misleading because that makes it sound like we're disconnecting the battery from everything else. But all that we're really doing is disconnecting the battery from this fuse box. The battery is still connected to the inverter charger and it's still connected to the solar panels. But nonetheless, I still like to disconnect this. Now just know, if you do this, that means that your refrigerator and all the other 12 volt items won't work unless this is plugged back in. But I like to still disconnect that regardless. All right, so there you have it. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm not an expert on this stuff. I'm not an expert on solar, on electricity, on campers, RVs, or anything of that nature. I just watched a bunch of YouTube videos, read all the manuals, and checked a lot of wires out myself and looked at a lot of different settings and just my own observations. So overall, what do I think of the FLEV? I actually like it quite a bit. I really like all the different solar elements that are installed. I do think there were some missteps, like having the converter installed. That converter, which doesn't show up on the manual, really threw me off until I was able to uninstall it. It wastes a bunch of electricity and could even cause some short circuiting. That's something that for sure I would recommend people either uninstall entirely or at least turn off the circuit breaker switch. I'd also recommend setting the charge rate on the inverter down to about 35 amps. Again, the only reason to have it any higher is if you're trying to charge the battery a little bit faster when you're using your shore power at home. But otherwise, it's just going to run the risk of throwing off a breaker when you're plugged into shore power. So again, at the end of the day, what we like about it is the induction cooktop stove, so we're not pumping propane in when we're cooking on the inside. And that's really important for us at Burning Man if it's the middle of a dust storm and we have the thing sealed up really tight, we don't want to be inhaling those fumes. We also really like not having to have a, a, a generator with us. We do just in case as a backup, but if we ever run out of gas in that little generator when we're out at Burning Man, we know we have the solar to top us off. And when we're doing camping in the summertime here in Minnesota, we really don't need the generator at all. So overall, yeah, I do like it quite a bit. Pretty happy with the purchase. Hopefully this video is helpful to you. These are things that I wish I would have known on that first day when I brought this little camper home. Hopefully my experience is helping you out. And if you've got some ideas, throw them into the comments below and help some other people out. Thanks and have a great day.